So that, that, I hadn't expected that. So now it's hard to tell what, the, what they'll do. They want to make Mars now, and they'll probably, they'll probably do it. <laughs> what do you think the future of not so much commercial aviation, but general aviation, private aviation that you've been involved with all these years, do you, what do you see for the future of it? It's hard to tell what's going to happen there. They, they, they may make, uh, they think they're getting uh, 2,000 passenger airplanes or more, like a steamship, but uh, I don't know how practical that is. They, they, I think they're going to go to some smaller ones and faster, try to make more speed. But I actually don't know. I can't, I can't foresee that. A lot of people have a theories on it. They know what's going to happen. But uh, and I don't know what they really do either, but I, but I can't foresee. But I think they're going to, they're going to, uh, they got to get safer airplanes that, uh, that, that, uh, that won't blow up and things like that. Outside, of course, the bombers that they get, that, uh, or people, people put bombs in them, that's pretty hard to handle. But uh, uh, they're, they're going to get faster ones, I think, considerable faster. How about private airplanes? Well, I don't know. They're, they're beating private airplanes down now. It's pretty hard there. Uh, this uh, this uh, uh, liability insurance, you read about all the factories and stuff, and they, they sue, uh, sue somebody for, for anything. I just like that. I, I read a piece where they had a car accident and uh, <clears throat> the um, girl got hurt and put her in a wheelchair for life. And the people didn't have any money, they sold cars, but they had Michelin tires on it, new tires. So they sued Michelin and got a million dollars. And the judge was a Supreme Court, big, big Supreme Court judge. Uh, and uh, he made a remark, as long as you had judges like that, we're going to have problems like that. He, he said, uh, they asked him why he did it. He said, well, Michelin had the money. He believed in dividing the wealth. And as long as he's in there, whoever got the money is going to pay. So that, that's caused quite a bit of trouble, too. Do people still want to learn how to fly their own airplanes? Uh, oh, yes. A lot of us. We, we turn people away now. I didn't, I don't have an instructor handy all the time. Turn them away now. What's the oldest and youngest person you've trained? I think in their, in their 70s, I've trained people in a, Youngest was, uh, uh, well, 15 or 16. They can't solo until they're 16 anyway. What and makes a good pilot? Well, that's a kind of a hard question to answer, but I have my own ideas about it. That, uh, people have, uh, that I'm sure are correct, uh, good coordination and rhythm. It's hard to describe what rhythm is. And uh, you take a, any kid at school, and some of, them, uh, some of them can't catch a baseball. They're all thumbs, and they can't play marbles. And I was always good at shooting marbles. I had, I had the rhythm. I knew that, but I didn't think about flying then. But, uh, but uh, uh, to try to describe what rhythm is, I found out that some people have, uh, uh, yeah, all musicians that I've ever been around and trained make good pilots because they got rhythm. And they also got a good ear for music. And I, I'm not good in the music, but I had good eye rhythm. And uh, you don't need the, the, the music, the ear rhythm to fly, but it makes you still better. Musicians are better. So whatever that is, wherever that comes from, it's, it's inborn, I think. And, uh, and there's some people that are support that. Well, like Max Rosenberg type, the big uh, actor, or big boxer, that uh, he was powerful, but he, he didn't have the rhythm. And I've noticed that all of them. I've had, I've had opportunity to train some uh, uh, famous ski jumpers and, and football players, and they're always good, they're always good. Because anybody that can be a, a star in that have got to have the muscle culture and the rhythm. Now for flying, you don't have to have the muscle, muscle culture, but you got to have the, I call it the eye rhythm, yeah. How much brain matter does it take? Well, it's hard to describe what that is. It's, uh, it don't take an awful lot of brain matter, I don't think. Of course, if you happen to have to be sharper, but it'd probably be better and get along better and, and all the things they'd have to do in the military, all the things they have to learn, they would do better, of course. Is there, uh, could you recommend for people who, or young people who are interested in aviation, some books or some films that would help them, you think, uh, learn to appreciate flying and maybe get some techniques? Well, I think there are a lot of books put out that they can read, surely, just to, Simple books and and uh, Elroy Jepson, an old friend of mine that makes Jepson charts, got to be famous himself. He's he, he's published a lot of books that are very very good, and there's a lot of other books people have written. 
But uh, uh, some uh, some people have not, they're good at flying. They have a physical trouble. They they get airsick. They call it pathologic airsickness, and they wash them out. But they uh, they can still fly. I've trained people to fly that they, they they got sick every time, and they wouldn't make good military pilots or airline pilots because they they couldn't mess with them. You know, they'd be having trouble all the time. But they can fly privately and get along, fly when they want to, and do very well. How how could a person recognize a good flight instructor? You've been one. Is there some questions they should ask, or some things they should look for? Uh, or? Well, sure. You can tell by talking to them, young young people, and. Uh, between, I've trained a lot of girls, and, and there's no difference between uh, men or women and girls and boys and flying. There's, so it depends on their heredity. Uh, usually, a, if one of the family is good, if a boy is good, his sister will be good. Uh -huh. Maybe may, may even better to him. <laughs> but uh, 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 they, I remember when they appropriated $25,000 to the military to try to make, a, uh, make a test, a written test and things. Uh, uh, looking at charts with chains and pulleys run in different ways to test their mechanical ability. And it, it helped quite a bit, but usually anybody who's, who's mechanical uh, can fly because it's a matter of mechanics. And, uh, but, uh, but judgment is something you can't appraise. Some people have poor judgment. They do things that are, that are foolish and they go out and try to fly under a wire and they don't uh, uh, they misjudge and they, they might hit the wires. So they shouldn't do it. Uh -huh. Don't allow for that. Okay. Now, anything? Do you think there's any romance involved with aviation? You, you know, they make movies about the romantic flyers, or is, or is it is it just a job, or is it more than just a job? Well, they used to have it that way. They thought that they, usually they thought that a pilot had to be a superior physical specimen. But I was kind of a runt, weighed 120 pounds and. And uh, it didn't, that didn't bother me because the airplanes got power and you don't need that. But uh, they, uh, a, lot of, uh, uh, a lot of the pilots, uh, uh, if they had rhythm and everything, they're supposed to be uh, uh, romantic and all that. <laughs> I don't know how true that is. But I didn't get married until I was 64 years old. But I had I plenty of respect for the, for the women. I love, I love the women. Uh -huh. but, uh, but, uh, a lot of the pilots used to drink and be wild and everything, but I was never that way. But, uh, but I found that the people with, with trustworthy judgment and coordination are the ones who get along good. I got by for 63 years with no accidents. And uh, they always used to have a joke that they're, they're old pilots and bull pilots, but there aren't any old bull pilots. So uh, by, uh, by using uh, uh, careful judgment, I've avoided accidents. Yeah. Has aviation been a good life for you? Oh yes, uh, my whole life, put my life into it, yeah. yeah. That's why I, I, I can hardly retire. I, I wouldn't know what to do. I'd sit home and be pretty bad, <laughs> pretty bad sitting at home doing nothing. So you love coming to your airport? Oh right? yes, I just say so, yeah. Could you say a few words about the military out here in Yakima, as far as you, know, you do the fueling? Oh yes, I dealt with, the, I was never actually inducted in the Army ever, but I've dealt with the military probably longer than anybody around. They're, they're very, very, above average people, very fine. I dealt with them and I've sold uh, uh, fuel in the last 25 years to the military and uh, Navy and Army and Air Force and Marines and uh, the Coast Guard and all of them. And uh, I made friends with them and they come by and, and pay me great honors, send me plaques and stuff. Why would they come to Yakima? Uh, well, the, the, their business with the Yakima Fire Center, they, it's so close to the airport, they like, they like to come over here at the airport and uh, deal with it right now. And I, I, I found some wonderful fellows all the way from Buck Flavis to, to Four Star Generals we met. Uh -huh. And uh, treated, treated me very well, I appreciate that. So, and I've, I've had the privilege of training a lot of military pilots that retired as full colonel, a lot of them. Some of them, most of them retired, but there's a lot of airline pilots flying I've trained right now, believe it or not. I got uh, Andy Hawkins, and uh, Eastern Airlines called me up the other day and asked me if I needed a gas boy. And uh, is, it, is it going? Yeah. yeah. And uh, he said, I'm sitting on the ground around <laughs> strike. <laughs> so, Looking for work, huh? So later, he come out and visit. He's got four children, and I trained him to fly, but he's a uh, 
he's selling his page boy radio. He's doing pretty good. He's pretty sharp. And then uh, Jordi Malloy, Canadian Airlines, flies over once in a while, 30,000 feet, and says hello on the radio, on the Unicom. And he said, uh, heading from Mexico City. And one time I told him, I said, boy, it's going to be nice and warm down there, about 10 above here. He said, yeah, but he said, I got to come back. <laughs> then there's David Turner, captain of 747 in the Northwest, and uh, Scott Johnson, and then there's uh, uh, Paul Wiles for flying Northwest. And uh, who else? Who's that fellow who was just here? He said he, he just got his captaincy on 727? Well, Larry Wyman, I didn't train him, no, no, didn't train him. But a lot of others are retired that I trained. And uh, some of them even died, died of sickness. There's Harold Burlingame over, over the coast. You, you, you may have met Harold when you were flying. He retired 747 body. He learned to fly when he was 16. Dale Samuelson, who uh, teaches at Ellensburg, uh, he helped me for 15 years as chief pilot. Very fine, very good.